Can we get the air conditioning rattling a little more in the background, please? I'm having a wonderful time in Philly. You've got me right in the middle of the US tour, about to go to Europe, and then I'll come back here. I'm essentially on the run forever. I think I'm running toward my demons. I'm trying to catch up to my demons. I feel like me and my demons need to get reacquainted. in Philadelphia was February 2020. <laughs> Did I miss anything? <laughs> My appearance tonight is proudly brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> I have had not one, not two, but three shots of the sweet, sweet Pfizer juice. <laughs> I'm ready to mingle, Philly. Spit in my fucking mouth. <laughs> I'm ready for a fourth one. I want the fourth one. I don't, I don't care what's in it, I'll drink it. Put it in me. I once snorted a line of speed off the seat of a porta potty. Whatever's gonna kill me, I already did it. It's in here right now, slowly multiplying. Just a little shadow on an MRI. Which, incidentally, is my new single. <laughs> it's just a little shadow on an MRI. It's gonna kill me in my sleep. Yeah. <clears throat> you can get that on my SoundCloud. <laughs> now, look, there's still a bit of vaccine hesitancy out there, and on some level, I understand the vaccine hesitant. I think it's good to be suspicious of potential misinformation. But there is also some misinformation amongst the vaccine hesitant. You may be surprised to learn. <laughs> I was reading in the news about a hairdresser who was banning anyone who had been vaccinated from entering her hair salon because she said anyone who had had the vaccine had the ability to drastically negatively impact the menstrual cycle of any women they even happened to be in the same room as. So apparently I can do that now. What a shit superpower. By the power of my vaccination, meow, pew, 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 slightly heavier flow. Ha! <laughs> meow, pew, 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 right in the middle of a Pilates class. <laughs> <laughs> I am iron deficiency, man. <laughs> I understand if you get the vaccine, it messes with your cycle. I had a lot of friends who had weird periods for a couple of months after getting the vax, but just by mere proximity to those who have been vaccinated, that is some powerful stuff. <laughs> That's like you shitting your pants because I had Wendy's three days ago. <laughs> This is my inhale exile tour. I'm on what I'm calling a self-imposed exile from Australia. Oh my God, that's his accent. <laughs> I'm in self-imposed exile, I'm happy with that. I'm like a modern day Marlena Dietrich. Although while she was a Hollywood starlet who refused to go back to her home country of Germany during World War II, I'm a B-grade comedian who's not going back to Australia until they take serious action on climate change, acknowledge the systemic racism, and publicly distance themselves from Outback Steakhouse and Foster's. <laughs> we don't eat that shit. We don't drink that shit. <laughs> But when you're in self-imposed exile, you gotta give back. 
You know what I mean? You've got to be, give back to your homeland. And just as Marlena donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to help Jewish people escape from Germany, this year I will be exclusively following Australian-based sex workers on OnlyFans. So we're basically the same person. We're basically the same person. You people are amazing. What I go, oh, hello there. I've just noticed that you can see what's happening down here. <laughs> You're getting, you're already getting the special DVD featurette behind the scenes. <laughs> Haven't even put out the special, you're already seeing the action. <laughs> Stop looking down there! <laughs> What's your name? Jess. Jess, and who are you here with Jess? Uh, Kevin. Jess and Kevin! Woo! <laughs> what did you do today, Jess? <laughs> what did you do today, Jess? Uh, I Jess! you do today? Yeah. Yeah. You worked. What do you do in the daytimes, Jess? I'm a project manager. You're a project manager. Just any fucking project. I'll manage it. I don't care who it's for. Bring me a project and I will manage it. Is Kevin a project you've been managing? <laughs> Kevin's shaking his head. You haven't been managed, Kevin. <laughs> you look very neat and tidy. You've got a button-up shirt. Looks pretty fucking managed to me. <laughs> what are you doing the dead times, Kevin? Uh, I'm a biologist. You're a biologist. Oh, my God. You don't need a project manager. You're out there looking at things, digging up tadpoles and eating them and shit. Is that what you do? <laughs> I assume that's what happens. <laughs> What's your name? What is it? Ulyssa. 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 E-L-L-I-S-A. -L -L no. No? Okay, let's play this game for 25 minutes. <laughs> E-L-I-S-A. E-L-Y-S-A. No. No. Think Melissa, drop the M. Think Melissa, drop the M. E-L-L-I-S-S-I-A-M-I-Double Mississippi. <laughs> today, Melissa? Mm, I got high and I came to a great show. You got high and you came, yes! Yes! Alyssa's a drug addict, let's go! Woo! Let's glorify drug use, come on! What kind of drugs did you take? You took a nice edible. Oh, yes! Apparently I'm a lot of fun on edibles. Something to do with the color and movement. <laughs> Hi, Alicia. So I took the wrong bag home from the airport. <laughs> when I got here, I went, I got the bag off the baggage carousel and I took it home, didn't look at the bag tag, looked exactly like my bag, threw it in the corner, had a nice cup of tea, watched an episode of The X-Files. And then I went to open it to get my phone charger out. Not my stuff! It was weird. I mean, at first it was funny, like I was trying on all the clothes, <laughs> using the toothbrush. Gave myself a back massage with the vibrator. But then suddenly it occurred to me, hang on a second. If I have this person's stuff, then this person must have my stuff. Quickly, back to the airport. Some son of a bitch is touching my shit. Hurry, before they find the hard drives. Yes, 
That was an airport story. Because <laughs> if you didn't know this, the American Association of Touring Comedians has an industry standard that you have to adhere to when you do shows here as a foreign artist. It's union regulated. There's nothing I can do about it. You have to do at least uh, two to three airport, airline or airplane stories. You need at least um, four to five cum references. <laughs> and a hot take on the difference between men and women. So I'll just tell another airport story and then I'll segue seamlessly into my hilarious impression of my wife getting ready to go out to dinner. <laughs> it's all moisturizer and shoe buckles. She's such a dumb bitch. <laughs> so I was at the airport. <laughs> I spent a couple of weeks in California and I had to fly, woo, woo! And I might have been in the shit bit, you don't know. I just say that, California, woo, which bit? I was in Eureka. <laughs> which is nice, it is nice there, but I spent a couple of weeks up there and I had to fly from Eureka in Humboldt County to Denver, Colorado. And I, <laughs> that's all you have to do in this country is just name a place <laughs> and someone will just, woo, woo! New York! Woo! Chicago! Woo! Yeah, you're very... <laughs> USA! USA! There's lots of bits. We all live in one of them. We visited some. We liked them when we were there. <laughs> you're very unified as a country, aren't you? Any fucking way. I had to fly from Eureka Airport in Humboldt County to Denver, Colorado, and I arrived at the airport, and I don't know if you've been to that airport, but it's more of a log cabin than an airport. In place of a departures board, there's like the head of a moose mounted on the wall. And as I walked in, a police officer immediately approached me and said, where's your mask? And I went, oh, shit, I don't have my mask on. This is back when we were still wearing masks. And by the way, I am pro-mask, I'm just anti-ears. <laughs> So I put my backpack down and I reached into the front pocket of my backpack to retrieve my mask and I grabbed a hold of something that was not a mask. <laughs> One of the side effects of being a touring comedian traveling through California is that total strangers give you free drugs. <laughs> Which is how I found myself crouched on the floor of an airport next to an officer of the law holding a handful of hallucinogenic mushrooms. <laughs> and for some reason, I looked up at the cop and said, Hi. <laughs> and he said, Do you have a mask? And I said, <sighs> I'm just looking for my mask. And I reached around in the pocket and I found the mask, but it was just loose in the pocket with the mushrooms. And I realized if I pulled the mask out, the shrooms would go flying across the terminal. So I said, I can't seem to locate my mask officer. And he reached for his gun and I said, please don't kill me. And then he pulled a disposable mask out of his pocket and said, I got a spare. You have a great flight. <laughs> Thank you, officer. Now, I'm not sure what kind of training Humboldt County police officers do to recognize suspicious activity. <laughs> But on that day, this guy must have been out racially profiling teenagers or something because he was oblivious. Now, I'm getting the sense from a lot of you, mostly Alyssa, that... <laughs> I'm getting the sense that you're all going, Randy, what's the big deal? Mushrooms are decriminalised in California. I didn't know that. <laughs> So I'm like, I can't check these mushrooms in. The cop's standing at the door looking at me. There's no trash cans in the terminal. I said, like, what am I going to do with these mushrooms? And then it came to me. I crouched down next to, the, next to the wall, right? And I put my bag down and I pretended to tie my shoelaces. And then I just ate them. <laughs> All of them. That flight from California to Colorado was the longest three weeks of my life. 
I spent the rest of the day lying on the floor of an airport hotel in Denver just going, Fwee! Fwee! <laughs> oh, gosh. When are you going to grow up, Randy? <laughs> Unless you deprogram yourself at some point, every choice you make as an adult is based on an idea you had as a child. Which is terrifying, because children are fucking idiots! <laughs> Running around, bumping into the furniture, eating dirt. You dedicate your life to just trying to keep them alive. Then they get a little bit of therapy in their 30s, and suddenly it's your fault they punched a police horse and took a shit in a mailbox. <laughs> I have nothing against therapy. I think everybody should do therapy. I think it's a great thing. I've done it. Most of my friends have done therapy. A lot of people my age have done therapy. My father's generation, fuck no. <laughs> you wouldn't see a shrink unless you had a nervous breakdown, which these days I believe the kids refer to as being honest with yourself and those around you. <laughs> Fucking snowflakes. <laughs> but again, not to shit on my father's generation, you know, my father's generation, salt of the earth. Hard-working, barbecue, tong-wielding, negative gearing, pillars of repression. <laughs> the kind of men who can't help but point out the make and model of every single car that drives past. <laughs> oh, there's a GMT, XE, CRV, and yet, really struggle with the whole LGBTQIA plus concept. <laughs> Don't get me started on those freaks. They're taking up the entire alphabet. Oh, look at that SUV. <laughs> How are you going, Alyssa? You still having a nice time? I'm having a great time. You having a great time? Yeah. Are you about ready to have the other half? Or are you... <laughs> Did you go holsies? Yeah. You had the whole thing. Was it what, what form did it come in? Was it a gummy? Was it a brownie? It was a gummy. A gummy? <laughs> did you bring enough for everybody? <laughs> they were checking bags, so I was afraid not to. They were checking bags. They oh. Did, but I was afraid they would. Oh, they didn't check bags. <laughs> but, uh, but this won't make it to the special, will it? <laughs> helium aren't going to put a bit on. Watch Randy's Helium special where he tells everybody how to smug druggles into the clock. <laughs> I'm not going to put it in the special because I just said smug druggles. <laughs> That's the best. Smug druggles sounds like an informant from an 80s British cop film. You must go down and see smug druggles. He'll tell you. He'll tell you what train to catch. By the morning we'll have this ghastly... Oh, fuck. Oh... I feel like I've had one of... No, don't clap that! Don't clap the moment! <laughs> Philly, Philly's like, yes, we were there when Randy had a stroke on stage! <laughs> Smug druggles! Oh, 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 that really tickled me. <clears throat> so I was at the airport... <laughs> And I was standing behind this man who was travelling alone with his two children, which must be an absolute nightmare, right? <laughs> his kids were hating it, but he was hating it way more. And <laughs> I was standing behind him, just waiting for him to snap. And his kids were like, Daddy, I'm tired! <sighs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Daddy, I feel sick. You were an accident. <laughs> Daddy, I think I'm gonna. And this kid just. Just puked a. Right onto the airport floor, right between me and the dad. And I was like, haha, oh, what's he gonna do here? And he turned around and looked at me, looked down at the vomit, looked back up at me. And then, without breaking eye contact, slowly reached behind him, put his hand on his suitcase, and just rolled it over the vomit. <laughs> 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 
and then looked at me like, you want to make something of that, buddy? (laughs) No, sir, I salute you. (laughs) You kind of went with me on that. I don't know if that'll make the special. Might not, might end up on the cutting room floor. There's a few things I can't really do and say, you know, on this, because we're filming. You've got to kind of be a little bit conscious of where it's going to end up, you know. Like, I'm not going to say cunt, for example. <laughs> Which is a real shame, because it's, it's a term of endearment where I come from. And I think it's time to destigmatize that word, my friends, Philadelphia. Yes. Because the power of a word stems from its history. And I think that particular word is misunderstood as a word. As an archaic descriptor for female genitalia, the old sea bomb, it's been in languages forever, written language at least, that we've had documented, Egyptian, European, Norse, Indian. And at its origins, it's either a benign identifier or a term imbued with actual respect. The Hindu nature goddess Kunti, for example. (laughs) The word vagina is arguably more oppressive. The Latin origin of vagina is sword sheath. (laughs) Yeah, some Roman anatomist was like, that gentleman is where we shall holster our dicks. That is its sole purpose. (laughs) Kant is so much more inclusive. It's the whole clitorethro-vaginal complex. Internal, external, labia, perineum, clitoris, vagina. The whole magnificent vulvic cornucopia. (laughs) And I just think it's a better word. Vagina sounds kind of redneck. Check out my vagina! Got me a vagina! As opposed to, this is my cunt. Oh! Oh, it's so crisp and so powerful. I think it's misunderstood as a word. It's like a DJ at a wedding. It has a lot of power, but nobody gives a fuck about its backstory. Hello there, what's your name? Daz. Daz? Yep. Daz, how are you, Daz? Good, how are you? I'm really good, thanks, Daz. What did you do to Dad, Daz? Played some you played some video games. Any gamers in the house? <laughs> yeah. right. I'm pretty much on this tour, I've pretty much managed to figure out what my crowd is. <laughs> No, it's the first time I've really toured like this in the States. I've had some great shows, didn't know what my crowd is like. And I could just stand there at the door as people walk in going, gamer, 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 anime fan, anime fan, gamer, gamer. Which I'm super into. It's not a bad thing. Dad, um, what game were you playing, Dad? Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Any... All right, you passed the test. What else did you do today? You've got a bird! Daz has a bird, everybody! Oh, what kind of bird is it? He's a lovebird named Breadstick, and he's literally safe. So. I'm just digging my way to crowd work hell. Sorry, everybody. Nothing to do with you. It's just like, why am I doing crowd work at this point in the show? We had a great interaction with the stoner up the front. (laughs) These people are clearly in some sort of weird, fucked up relationship. (laughs) There was no need for me to tell you sound lovely. You've got a bird who's a lovebird. You're playing games. I've got no time for crowd work. There's no point. I don't know why I'm talking to you, but you seem really nice. Again. (laughs) How do we get out of this? Who are you here with? I don't know where my eyes were looking either. (laughs) This has been amazing. I've had such a nice time. I've, I've had a really great time on this tour. I've done some really cool stuff in the States. 
when I first when I first got here, um, I have a friend who lives uh, just outside of Dallas, and she has an RV, like a motorhome. And she asked me if I would like to borrow her RV for a couple of weeks to explore this beautiful country. And I said, "You bet your bloody boots, I would, baby." <laughs> Because I love a house on wheels. I love it. Go wherever you want. Stay wherever you want. Dinner under the stars. Breakfast on the beach. It is my ultimate lifestyle. For three days, tops. <laughs> then I'm checking into a hotel. Because despite what you may think, I am not a 75-year-old retired IT consultant. <laughs> Counting down my loveless marriage one soul-destroying road trip at a time. <laughs> Nor am I a 23-year-old rock climber on an Anthony Bourdain-style tour of the West Coast's sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> As soon as I went to pick up this RV and saw the dream catcher hanging from the rear view mirror, I knew I'd made a terrible mistake. <laughs> it was a real pile of shit, this car. The seats, covers smelt like ayahuasca. There was like a hole in the floor. I could see the road through the floor. The knob on the top of the stick shift was the head of a Barbie doll. I was like, ah. Oh. Oh, okay, at some point this van is going to become my fiery tomb. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. Can't wait to perish in a van. I got in. No gas. It had just enough gas to get to the nearest gas station. Literally pulled up the gas pump and it went... <laughs> so I got out of the van and I went over to the gas pump Instantly confused, United States of America, is the most America. Instantly confused, United States of America. <laughs> In Australia, where I hail from, we pump our gas and then we enter the gas station and we purchase the gas. We don't prepay for our gas. I'm not sure why there's a difference. I think maybe because we're riddled with colonial guilt, whereas you are a nation of fucking gas thieves. <laughs> You know what, with gas prices the way they are, who can blame you, am I right? <laughs> See, who said political comedy can't be fun? <laughs> so I'm standing there trying to figure out how to use my card on this gas pump. My card wasn't working, there was no button for filler up. I didn't know how to work it. And as I was trying to figure it out, this man pulled up behind me in his truck, like a full, like, truck. And, and, I, and I saw he pulled up behind me and through his windshield, he was watching me just going. <laughs> trying to get my card to work. And I heard him through his windshield go, oh, oh I knew it. I knew it. And I looked at, oh, I fucking did you, Nostradamus. <laughs> And then I saw him clock the hand-painted mural of a lotus flower on the back of the RV, right next to the Magic Happens bumper sticker, which was in stark contrast to his own bumper sticker that read, Land of the free, but freedom ain't free, and you can't put a price on freedom. Woo! <laughs> With a picture of an eagle laying a grenade like an egg. And I was like, ah. Oh. Anyway, the pump wasn't working and he was like, mm, staring at me. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to go in. So I went into the gas station. I locked the RV before I went in because if people are stealing gas, they're sure as hell going to be after my vegan snacks. <laughs> I go into this gas station and working behind the register was this ashtray of a woman who... <laughs> yeah, let's pause to let that description sink in for a second. I said, my card is not working. Can I pay for it in here? And she said, actually, the terminal's down. It's rebooting. Can you pay with cash? I said, I don't have any cash. And she said, well, you'll just have to wait. And as soon as she said, you'll just have to wait, the man out there in the truck jumped on the horn. Meh, 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 meh. Which is another thing you people do very well in this country. <laughs> There's no such thing as a beep beep. It's always like, <laughs> And she said, oh, all right, look, just go and move your RV. And I said, I'll stop you there. It's got no gas in it. <laughs> Which is the only reason I'm here right now. And she said, oh, OK, look, I'll unlock the pump. Just leave your car keys. And a truck driver next to the coffee machine turned around and said, I wouldn't be giving her my car keys. She's been drunk since 1984. <laughs> Where the fuck am I? 
So I left my car keys. I go back out there. By the time I get back out there, the guy is now standing next to his car and he's very impatient. And I know he's impatient because as I get to the gas pump, he says, hurry up, asshole. <laughs> and I'd had enough at that point. I said, all right, I'm doing it. All right, I'm doing it. Just shut up, you fuck. Got the nozzle out of the gas pump. Motherfucker, tell me how to fucking pump gas, piece of shit. <laughs> Turn around, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> fuck you, man! Fuck you! <laughs> and then I realized that I locked the RV before I flipped the switch to open the gas tank. <laughs> so now, in front of this furious Texan, I had to gingerly return the nozzle to the pump <laughs> without pumping gas, <laughs> which is the gas station equivalent of erectile dysfunction. <laughs> I ran back into the gas station yelling over my shoulder, I'm so sorry, this has never happened to me before. <laughs> I go back up to the register, I say, can I please have my car keys? And she said, but you didn't pump any gas. I said, I know, because I forgot to unlock my gas tank. And she said, oh, you should have just paid with cash. I don't have any cash! <laughs> I grabbed the car keys, I went back out. Now there's three men waiting to use my pump. <laughs> all very angry, all open carrying. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna get buried in the desert. So I unlock the car, I flip the gas tank open, I start pumping the gas and these guys start circling my car like jackals. Get a move on, hippie, we ain't got all day. Hey, nice dream catcher. I was like, oh my God, please, I don't wanna die in the desert. I finish pumping the gas, I put the nozzle back in the gas pump. They're like, get out of here, you hippie. I was like, oh, sweet Jesus. I jumped in the van, I sped away, shaking. It took me about 45 minutes to calm down. <laughs> which is when I realized I left without paying for the gas. <laughs> I did not go back. <laughs> Alyssa, would you say that your use of drugs is uh, at a religious level? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When you have a hobby and it flips over into a religion, like when interest becomes obsession. We all have these things, we all have them. Everybody's got something that they turn into a religion. It's all about what we choose to make our gods, our personal gods. Work, family, sport, love, food, politics, drugs, pets, TikTok, fitness, shame, Benedict Cumberbatch, whatever's your poison. <laughs> You lose people to these pursuits as if they've disappeared into the wilderness and joined a cult. It happens all the time. Study is the classic example. I never went to college, but I have had many friends just evaporate for four years and then reappear with a diploma and a prescription for antidepressants. <laughs> And I've switched gods a bunch of times. I always change up my gods. You know, it's good to be aware of them, mix them up. A booze was my god for quite some time. I was into the booze for a bit, got rid of that. Um, sex was my god for quite a while. Used to be a real fucker. <laughs> but then, you know, one day you just catch yourself taking a shit on the chest of a 37-year-old man. <laughs> while his wife watches on in the corner, <laughs> dressed in an ill-fitting Harley Quinn costume and choking herself on a dragon dildo. And, and you think, I've probably clocked this. It might be time to take a step back. As you all did during that description. Every layer, oh, oh. Oh, I didn't come to Philly to have my yum yucked. Fuck you people. <laughs> I'm at an interesting point in my life now with dating, like I'm single and traveling around. I don't really get to date. It's not really a thing. I don't, there's not really any point. You know what I mean? Like, I, just, I don't stay anywhere long enough. It's sort of weird. Like, a typical date with me these days is, hi, my name's Randy. I'm a 41-year-old anti-child commitment phobe, and I'm leaving town tomorrow. Cut to the bedroom. Oh, my God, I'm wasting your time. Oh, oh you like the way I waste your time like that? Oh! Cut to a plane taking off. Roll credits. <laughs> 
you guys have been amazing. This has been such a fun time. I've, uh, I've had... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a positive laugh or a laugh of doubt. <laughs> 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 No, it's been good. I've had a really nice time. I was in Canada just before I came out here. By the way, did you just boo Canada? <laughs> boo! Canada's cool, although, you know what? You know what? If you ever want to piss off a whole bunch of Canadians at once, announce a North American tour with no Canadian dates on it. <laughs> oh, they hated me so much! It was the best. Try that. I am going to go to Canada, but I just didn't put any Canadian dates on my tour dates. And they were like, oh, you forgot about us. You forgot about us. <laughs> anyway, um, so I was in uh, <laughs> one person. <laughs> he was doing an impression of a Canadian. <laughs> he won't make it to the special. He'll get cancelled in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So I did, what the, what was that? <laughs> you people are off chops, this is the best. All I need to do is wait for the laugh to die down and then for someone to go <laughs> Shit, shit, shit. Did you really, did you distribute some of those gummies? It sounds like. <clears throat> anyway, I did a gig in Ontario in a place called Brampton, just to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give everybody credit for how quick they are on that. It's gonna. I, I, what's that weapon? What did you say? What? What was that? What was it? What? Which? What did he say? I'm not going to be mean to you. I just couldn't understand you. I feel like there might be some pearls of wisdom being thrown at the stage like bullets of intelligence. And if I don't stop the show and go back, rewind, to hear your words clearly and eloquently, I might be missing out on something that might change my entire perspective. Please tell me what the reason that was. He likes gigs. Yes. Oh, gigs as in going to comedy shows. Yes. Oh, well, that's lovely. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I also heard someone go, shh. <laughs> is that, there's someone in your party just going, let it go, he'll move on if you don't say anything. <laughs> I ain't moving on for no one. <laughs> We're doubling down on this one. What is it about gigs that you like, sir? <laughs> Elaborate on it. Gigs, discuss. <laughs> someone, someone take over for him, he no, you're not. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> motherfucker yells out, he doesn't get to phone a friend <laughs> if he's not ready to back it up. <laughs> I want to talk to the man who went, Bella Gigs! <laughs> what did you do today, sir? I love you, Randy. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> no! Get fucked, America! He doesn't get to get out of this situation going, oh, I love you, Randy. You're like, everyone's like, ah, oh. oh, that little full house gene in you kicks in and you all turn into a studio audience. Oh. <laughs> See, this is a good gig. The one I did in... <laughs> The one I did in Brampton, I came, I came out at the start and I spoke to a woman in the front and I said, who are you here with tonight? And she said, no one. And I said, see that everybody? Comedy's for everyone, even people who can't get laid. <laughs> Nobody laughed. <laughs> and then I proceeded to eat shit for 56 minutes straight. <laughs> No laughs. It was icy cold. They hated me. After the show, I went up to the manager. I said, I don't know what happened. And she said, oh, you know that lady that you spoke to at the start? Yes. Her husband died. Oh. And I said, oh, my God, no. When? And she said, 2013. Oh, get over it, Brampton. <laughs> That's
pre-show, 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 you know. What are your pre-show rituals, Randy? Well, ordinarily they're not uh, running around on the street like a maniac. Huh? Bring it in, huh? bring it in. Are you serious? Bring it the fuck in. Oh my God. How you doing, I man? I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. Do you want one? <laughs> yes, we did it. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, this is fun times. Oh, the tears are a filthy bunch, but we're also... Amazing! Yeah. That's the best! Yeah. Will you get in there? I will! You I have will. a good time! Oh Thanks for coming. It's going to be a good time. Good crowd, good crowd. Looking like a good crowd. It's going to be good times. <sighs> Hello. This is the closest I've come to some sort of weird paparazzi experience. <laughs> what are you doing there, filming? Ruining the fucking magic. Look at you, you could set your watch to that haircut. It's magnificent. This is the club, this is where it all happens. We all good, few people, few heads. It's gonna be good, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. Thank you so much, I suited up for the occasion. You're likable. You're like oh, you're likable as well. We're both very likable. Come over here and hug me on camera. Look how likable we are. Look, come, come look at this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so likable. Thank well, you. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I've got COVID. So, Next question. So Where is this interview going, by the way? Where is this ending up, this footage? It's just a conversation. Oh, and that's just a little cool little backstage chat talking about being at the club, having a nice... You know what I'm excited about? What's that? This room being full of humans. Very soon, they're gonna be laughing and having a nice time. Not so keen on my feature act, Rand Barnaclo. Bit of a cunt, 